Peru is interesting, it contains about 70% of the world's tropical glaciers. As you can imagine, the tropics isn't a great place for glaciers. Um, many mountain regions around the world are warming at much higher than the global average, and that's true also in Peru. The glaciers in Peru have been uh, retreating over the last few decades. They've lost about 30% of their area. The very special thing about Peruvian glaciers is actually they're vital as a water resource for the region. So during the rainy season, uh, the glaciers receive snowfall and they're nourished. Um, and in the dry season, when there's less rain, they then melt and continue to provide meltwater for local communities. So they really buffer kind of low water supply during the dry season when the rain stops. So they're really, really important in providing water to, to people, to croplands, to, to animals as well. With any big, grand environmental challenge, it's so much more powerful to be able to bring people together across disciplines, across borders. And I think the project we're running is a unique example of that. So I'm a glaciologist from the UK. I've done a lot of work on glaciers. Raul Luizamuro, my collaborator in Peru, he's an ecotoxicologist, so he's very up on uh, the impact of water quality on people and on an ecosystem. So together, actually, we bring a really unique set of skills together, which enables us to kind of address this grand challenge about water quality and glacier retreat in Peru. But the glaciers in the Cordillera Blanca, they sit on top of these rocks, which are very metal rich. As the glaciers are retreating, they are exposing those rocks in front of them, they get washed by the rain, they're open to the atmosphere, the metals get dissolved out of the rocks and, and the rock that process produces acid, so the rivers are becoming acidic and very metal toxic. What we don't know is which rivers that's going to happen to, which rivers that's not going to happen to. So what we're hoping to do through our project is to produce a vulnerability map for that whole region for the water resource managers so they can see which rivers are going to be a problem as the glaciers retreat, which ones we don't think will be a problem. And then on the flip side of that, to work with these communities to help them to remediate some of the toxic waters in the rivers, which is happening due to glacier retreat. So they're constructing artificial wetlands. And by working with these communities, I think what's quite nice is actually we're kind of implementing a solution to the problem rather than just diagnosing the fact that there is a water quality problem in, in the mountains in that region. Wetlands are ecosystems that are unique to high altitude Andes. They are characterized by native flora consisting of moss and grasses. This ecosystem is like a sponge that uh, keeps water and also filters the water. So learning about the functioning of these ecosystems make us think about designing green infrastructure. One example is what happens here in the Shayap catchment. Glacier retreats has produced oxidation, acidification of water and transport of metals. This has been channelized down to an artificial wetland where we are aiming to treat a part of this acid water coming from the upper parts so we can improve the quality of delivering water to reservoirs so that local people can use this water for their lands, for crops, for example, for cattle rising. May the memory of my people not rage against me. I never wanted to murder the valley and let everyone know that I did not cause my own death. So this evening I'm about to perform in a play about changing glaciers in Peru where I will actually be becoming the glacier. So the performance is linked to a programme called Transmission. It's jointly funded by the Natural Environment Research Council in the, in the UK with the Hay Festival, which is the, one of the world's greatest literary festivals. Um, and Hay kind of paired me with a storyteller and actress in Peru, which is Erica Stockholm. And she's written a beautiful story about the changing glaciers from the scientific results that I've kind of discussed with her. I really think that there should be more collaboration between scientists and artists because I, I think at the moment it's pretty clear that the science messages about what's happening need to get out there in a more accessible way and artists have a brilliant way of doing that actually and there's something quite powerful that happens when art meets science. I, I really believe that if people come together across disciplines and across different nations that you can actually solve some of these problems. You all come to a problem with a different mindset and a different skill set and, and actually these kind of projects they help you open up a little bit and, and see things from another perspective to bring in different types of solutions. So I, I really, really believe that sort of international cooperation is key with solving grand environmental challenges.